Hi, let's talk about Ashtanga Yoga and how you can have success in Ashtanga. Today I'm giving you eight tips to have success in the powerful classic style of Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. This is brought to you by Ashtanga for Dummies. Get my essential guide to Ashtanga Yoga for Beginners at yogatraveler.net slash Ashtanga Yoga. What is Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga? Ashtanga Yoga is a classical yoga, over 5,000 years old, one of the original forms of yoga, and it is a sequence that it never changes, specifically the primary um, Ashtanga sequence is the same. One pose follows the next, and it's a science to the sequence. So as our body warms up through each pose, we get ready for the next pose. Traditionally, Ashtanga yoga was meant um, to be followed in that sequence and only in that sequence. Say you went to the yoga studio, it was called the Mysore studio, and you did the yoga poses and you got to a point in the sequence that your body was not open enough to complete the pose. They would tell you to go home. And that is so that you don't have injuries as you move forward because your body's not ready for that level of exertion or flexibility or whatever it is that the pose requires. Now, when yoga was brought to the West and specifically Ashtanga yoga, we, our bodies are different than in India and we um, had to adapt the yoga. And a man named Iyengar did a lot to help with that. He introduced things like yoga blocks and yoga straps and using the wall and teaching people how to prepare their bodies for some of these really intense physical experiences that Ashtanga yoga requires. So yoga can be really classical and really pure, but you can also change the pose a little bit by using a block, by using a strap, by adjusting it. So I believe in the classical form of yoga. I believe in Sanskrit. I believe in following the traditions of yoga. However, I also believe that yoga is for everybody, every body, and it can be adapted and made to keep our bodies safe, to make us more healthy, to build flexibility over time. And this is where my eight tips for success in Ashtanga yoga begins. Tip one, lower the expectations of your body. We have all seen on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere in social media, a yoga pose that looks beautiful. Perhaps it's someone who's very flexible. Perhaps it's someone who's very slender. They are doing a contortionist pose that you know that you would never be able to get your body into. Well, here's a tip. A lot of the poses that we see on social media are not necessarily, necessarily classic yoga poses. They've been adapted to be showy and fit a very flexible person. So the pure Ashtanga poses um, do require some flexibility, but they also are not always flashy. Some of them are meant to simply stretch our chest and open up like in Trikonasana. Some of them are meant to stretch our legs like in forward bends. Those poses aren't necessarily flashy and our bodies can do them. If we take our ego out and we just allow our body to open up gradually using our breath, using the props and, and not expect our body to do things that it cannot do. You will be successful if you let the journey just happen. If you keep telling yourself, well, I can't do that pose, so why continue? Then you're not going to have success. Tip two, practice every day. Now, Ashtanga yoga, the primary sequence, takes about an hour and a half, maybe even an hour and 45 minutes, just depending on your pace. So that may seem like a huge chunk of time to devote to practicing yoga every day. 
if we had that much time, that would be amazing, right? But not all of us do. We're moms, we work, we take care of other people, we've got many hats, and we don't have an hour and 45 minutes every day to do yoga. But you probably have 15 minutes every day. I personally think it's better to do yoga 15 minutes every day than to do it one time a week for an hour and a half. Why? Because our bodies will get tight in between the sessions. We won't have that continued flexibility and mobility. We'll get to a point, our bodies will get stiff again, and then we have to start from scratch. But if we're doing 15 minutes every day, we're keeping our body loose, we're building up a little stamina, and we're building up flexibility over time. So stop thinking about yoga as a long thing that we have to do. Think of it as more a daily maintenance to keep your body warm, to keep your body flexible, and to re retain your strength. Do 15 minutes every day. Tip three, utilize your props. Specifically, the props that work great for Ashtanga yoga are yoga blocks and yoga straps. A yoga block can be used on the ground to place your hand on it. So it's gonna bring the ground higher. Say this is ground level, look how much higher. It's at least a foot taller. So if you can't reach your hand to the ground or to your foot, you just place your hand on the block. The block has three different levels. So you can adjust as you build flexibility. Blocks are wonderful for starting to build flexibility and some balance. Sometimes we need something to hold on to, so a block can help. This isn't a very thick block. If you have balance issues, I would get a thicker block than what I'm demonstrating with. And a strap. Straps can be wonderful for building flexibility in the shoulders and in the legs, hamstrings and hips. So if I was reaching behind me and I can't pull my hands to touch back there, I can take my hands into the strap, widen it out a little and get a little more flexibility or reaching overhead and behind. This is Gamukasana utilizing straps. You can also take your straps around your feet in a forward bend pose so that you don't have to reach your toes. In Ashtanga, it'll tell you to reach for your feet, but not everybody can. And if we bend our knees, we've already lost that flexibility building in our hamstrings. So we just take the strap around our feet and we can still feel that stretching, that integration of the hamstrings and the hips. So blocks, probably two, and straps are essential for success in Ashtanga yoga. Tip four, work with a teacher. Now, of course, you can find yoga sequences online, and you can probably find a video recording of the entire short primary sequence or full primary sequence of Ashtanga online. And feel free to follow along, that's wonderful. But it's also very helpful to work with a teacher because that teacher would be able to tell you how you can adjust the poses. You'll probably get to a point in the sequence and there's a pose that your body can't do yet. And you may not know how to use the prop or adjust the arms or adjust the legs to make the pose possible. So working with a teacher who is experienced will help you to understand how to um, adjust that pose, modify the pose and make you feel successful. We never want to get to the point where we feel like we can't continue. And that isn't necessary. If you have a trained professional who can teach you how to adjust the pose to adapt to your body's needs. I have a program called Ashtanga for Dummies named on purpose for someone who's new to the Ashtanga program. And I will guide you through ways to modify the poses. I would love for you to take advantage of my program and we can work together. So you can find the link to my program Ashtanga for Dummies in the notes of this video. Tip five, learn how to breathe, specifically Ujjayi breath. Ujjayi breath is we, when we breathe in through our nose and out through our nose. And this is the breath that we use, very powerful for Ashtanga yoga. This is something that we have to practice. It may not feel natural at first to breathe in this manner. 
And specifically, we make a sound, a vocalization, and a force with our throat. Now, it's really easy to open our mouth and breathe out. <sighs> Hear that sound? Now try it with your mouth closed. I'm still exhaling. I can hear the sound. And we can feel it. So when we do Ashtanga breathing, Ujjayi breathing, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to build up heat inside our body. And we're going to have a physical release an exhalation that we can feel and that we can hear. And it's going to help to release a little bit of pressure, both in our mind and in our body. Let's try it a couple times together. We'll close our mouth and breathe in through our nose and exhale through our nose. See if you can make that sound in your throat. So start by exhaling your air out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Get the idea? As you continue on, you'll start to feel the breath deepen. It will move from just the lungs down into the, the diaphragm, deeper into the stomach, and will fill up this space, almost like there's a balloon inside of our belly, expanding and decreasing with each breath. And it's just going to work to heat us up and to keep us calm. Plus, there's this other thing that happens with Ujjayi breath. It's really easy to let our mind wander when we're doing yoga, especially Ashtanga. It's a set sequence. If you're very familiar with it, you might kind of tune out in your mind. So having that breath that is very consistent, that's deep, and it has a sound, it can bring our attention back and our focus back. You feel your mind wandering and you just go, breath. Listen to the breath and all of a sudden you're back in it again. It's just a little mindfulness that we can do as we do our practice, as we do our movement. Tip number six. I call this one, are you sore? Two more weeks of yoga. <laughs> this is a funny little thing that um, Patabi Joyce used to say to his clients. He is the founder of Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga and very responsible for, in part, bringing yoga, Ashtanga yoga to the United States. And he would, people would come to him and say, I'm sore in my back, in my shoulders, in my hips. And he would say, two more weeks of yoga. And that's all he'd say. <laughs> and the point is to not give up. You're sore. You're probably sore because you've been stimulating your muscles. You've been building up some flexibility and your body's going to get sore. This is not necessarily bad. There are two different kinds of pain. Obviously, there's pain that does not go away and that is damaging. Usually pain like this, it's hard to breathe through. Our body kind of has a response like a shock response or um, you just can't breathe through it. Pain that is uncomfortable. Yoga poses are not necessarily always comfortable especially if we do struggle with flexibility. We can breathe through it because we're using things like straps and we are using our Ujjayi breath and we learn how to stay in the pose and allow the body the time to relax in that pose. So you keep going, you keep trying. It's all right to give yourself a break day, a rest day. Sure, of course, listen to your body at all costs. At, in all times, at all cases. But if you just give up, you're never going to increase your flexibility. You're never going to increase your stamina or your strength. So you do need to keep at it and it will get better. Tip number seven, learn modifications. Each yoga pose has a modification. What do I mean by that? 
I mean that we change the pose, either the way our arms are positioned, the way we utilize straps and blocks, or um, the way we bend our knees. It's ways that we can change the pose, still do the pose, be successful for our unique body. I do yoga in a chair with people. We're still doing Virabhadrasana B, Warrior Two, but it looks different because it's in a chair. But are we still getting the benefits of the pose? Absolutely we are. Maybe not the balance because we're sitting in the chair, but we're able to reach our arms, stretch our arms, we're able to shift into our hips. So I guess I'm saying, don't worry if you have to modify a yoga pose, change a yoga pose. Don't feel like you're not doing the pose. You still are. And you're probably getting a different benefit than someone who's doing the pose full out. Same pose, different benefits, but it's all good because there are still benefits. A qualified teacher can help you learn the the modifications of the pose. That's one thing that my Ashtanga for Dummies program does very well. Again, there is a link in this video notes that you can find and to join me at that program. I step, walk you through each yoga pose and show you how you can modify the pose. And then you can find what works best for your body. There's no harm in modifying. I think it's what makes Ashtanga a possibility. Tip number eight, final tip. Get a quality mat. <laughs> there are a lot of mats you can buy on Amazon, at Target, and that's great. I love it. I had tons of mats throughout my, my time of practicing yoga. Actually, here's a funny story. The very first time I went to a yoga class, I didn't use a mat at all. I just did it on the floor with my hands and feet <laughs> because I was convinced that I wasn't going to like yoga and that I would um, not do it again. So why would I want to invest money in a mat? Well, 11 years later, I'm still doing yoga every single day, multiple times a day. I love it, obviously. So a good quality mat is going to do a couple things for you. You are in downward facing dog, Adha Mukha Svanasana, a lot. Our hands slide on the mat if we don't have a sticky mat. Our heels slide. So we're in this pose and we can't really feel the benefits. Adha Mukha Svanasana is actually considered a resting pose. I find it very stimulating, but we can rest our body in it because we can ease into the hands and into the feet and really stretch through the hips. You can't do that if your hands are sliding on your mat. I personally like a thick mat. I like to feel like there's some support underneath me. Now, I'm not talking about an exercise mat that's really cushy. There are thicknesses of yoga mats. My preferred brand is Manduka. My second favorite brand is Hugger Mugger. I like them both. Um, they are thick. They lay flat. They have a good stickiness quality to them. Um, they are wide. Sometimes mats are thinner, and then we feel like we can't spread our, our hands as wide as we might need to for things like downward facing dog. So a good quality mat is going to make you, one, want to do yoga more often, and two, feel really good in the pose. And a teacher, if you work with a teacher, can direct you to a good mat for you, for your abilities and for your, for your levels. There's nothing wrong with getting a cheap mat and starting out. Sure, go ahead. If that's what you can do, then that's what you can do. But if you can invest a little bit of money into a quality mat, you will enjoy it better. Your experience will be exemplified. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for the eight tips to success in Ashtanga yoga. Join me on the mat through my program, Ashtanga for Dummies. There is a link in the video notes. I will guide you through each step, each pose of the Ashtanga short primary series with modifications, 
learning it, and also learning how to teach it as well for the teachers out there. I'd love to meet you on the mat. You can take these eight tips to heart and really apply them to your personal practice. I hope to see you soon on the mat.